Hi, it's Amy from Fox Run. Welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about building a homestead from scratch. For me, that meant just some land, very little money, and a whole lot of grit. I've had several people request this video, so let's get started. Just for reference, here's the cabin I built, which took several years. I've purchased two farms in my life. One was 20 acres and the other 12. Both were a mix of fields and woods. I purchased both farms on land contract. A land contract is a business deal between the owner and the buyer that doesn't utilize a bank. If that's something you want to hear more about, let me know in the comments. Both my farms were pretty rural and on gravel roads. The first farm I bought in 1993 in Southern Ohio, about an hour east of Cincinnati. The second farm was in my home state of Kentucky, about an hour south of Cincinnati. That gravel road was private, so that meant no city services like plowing. It also meant there was no public water. Electric went down the road about two years after I moved out there, but I had solar. So things to consider when you are buying. Buying just land is exciting because you have this empty canvas to make a beautiful space. It's also pretty scary since you are down to bare bones as far as infrastructure. In my case, I couldn't afford to pay both rent and farm payments plus buy lumber. This led to step number one. What are your priorities? What must you do first? As a single parent, my first priority was housing. I didn't need social services screaming at me. The first thing we did was build a shed. It made a nice place to get out of the rain and somewhere to put tools. It later became goat housing. But the main priority was to build a house. I pinched my budget and spent 400 a month on lumber. That way we were always building and working towards completion. Obviously, lumber has gotten more expensive in the past 17 years, but this cabin was built for under 5000 For this house, we only got half of it under cover and sealed up before winter. We had a big tarp over the exposed half to keep out the elements. I spent that first winter putting in insulation walls and windows. I felt like I was always battling the elements. So not only was the priority housing, but the cabin was a simple design meant to be easy to build and eco-friendly. Another priority is water. That first year I had to purchase water and have it hauled in and put in a tank. As soon as the shed was built, I put on gutters and placed stock tanks under them. I have an article in my blog I will link to about how I did my rainwater catchment system. We also used a dry composting toilet, so no water was needed there. I have an ebook on composting toilets on Amazon. I'll link to both in the description. So on my first farm, I had made animals a priority when I should have waited. I lost several chickens to predators and ended up putting money into a secure chicken house. Looking back, I should have waited on chickens. So the second farm, I held off a bit longer on getting the first chicks. I did go to area farmers markets to purchase fresh food and also get to know local farmers. This led to lots of bartering deals. I'm a big fan of barter for things you need. Your gardens are something you can get started with while you are doing bigger projects because initially you can just dig soil and plant seeds. Start small with gardens, get a compost pile going, and have a soil test done. Gardens are something you can work on over time. That's why in my book, Kick the Grocery Store Goodbye, I talk about that first year just concentrating on a fresh eating or salad garden. If your homestead comes with buildings, then I would put more energy into food production that first year. You definitely want to have a garden plan so you can be most productive. Never underestimate your ability to forage. 
It is always fun to explore your land or even parks nearby and see what is growing wild. Our woods had lots of black raspberries and even pawpaw trees. Even if you are an urban homesteader, there may be an abundance of fruits that are overlooked. A friend of mine forages from mulberries in local parks every summer. There is so much to think about when starting a homestead. We did things very basic that first year so that money could go towards infrastructure. That meant camping style for cooking and refrigeration. Things like solar, we didn't even get till we were about a year and a half in. We had propane lamps and the boys had battery operated flashlights and toys. I had several battery operated things that used rechargeable batteries and when I traveled back and forth to work, I charged them via the cigarette lighter. I'm not even sure if they put cigarette lighters in cars anymore. We spent most of our time outside, except in bad weather, so, you know, it was not a big deal. We did everything in chunks. So basically, so solar was basically a plug and play system that first, um, on both houses, those first sets of uh, solar that I got were really pretty simple. This box was the battery system and inverter, and the charge controller was on the wall above it. It ran upwards to the roof from the last picture where there were two solar panels. It ran quite a bit, including fans, laptop, lamps, microwave, and the PlayStation for a couple of hours on the weekend. I also discovered these nifty little solar lamps. They were primarily made for sheds, but I had one over the dining room table. It worked well for eating and even playing cards after dinner. We had started our first year on the second farm in late June. So that first fall and winter on the Kentucky farm was primarily building work. We had made three raised bread beds and brought in some horse manure from a nearby farm. That fall, I also splurged on some fruit trees at the end of season sales. Getting perennials going should be a goal with your gardens. Fruit trees and asparagus are going to take several years before harvest. I know it sounds quite boring to talk about planning. However, having a plan is so important. You need to decide where you are going to put buildings and perennials like your orchard plants. You can't move these things should you change your mind. This illustration is from the fabulous author, John Seymour, who wrote several books on self-sufficiency and was a leader in the back to the land movement in the 70s. His books may be a bit dated, but very worth reading. So when spring came around, we had the cabin enclosed. There was still lots to do, but it was a functioning home. So then I started to focus more on animals and getting the gardens up to par. On the first farm in Ohio, which I can't seem to find any pictures of, that was before digital anything, but we had raised chickens and dairy goats and sold at the local farmer's market. My older son was very active in 4-H and we felt very secure in our knowledge of those animals. And on a side note, a lesson learned, if you look at this picture, Never use chicken wire on chicken tractors. It is not predator proof. So the second year was focused more on gardening. This would be the first year of the three year plan that became the premise for kick the grocery store goodbye. We were still digging most of the beds by hand at this point. So that kept the size smaller and maybe kept me in control because it was more manageable. Back to priorities. Things like gravel for a driveway is expensive, so a driveway was not a priority for me. I waited till I had some extra money. Then I had gravel dumped and had my slave labor spread it out on pathways that were prone to being muddy. The reward was video game time. Fencing was a luxury, and nice fencing didn't come till much later. I eventually hired fence builders, and it was so much nicer than my strands of welded wire. 
I personally love cattle panels for temporary fencing. It works well for the goats. So this has just been based on my experiences. Do you have specific questions? Leave me a note in the comments section on what else you would like to see or learn about. Please boop that like button and subscribe to my channel and help me reach my goal of a thousand subscribers by July. Thanks for watching and have a sunny day.